I'm Ken Chrysler, Senior Editor of Power and Modiot Magazine, and I'm here at the New Bern, North Carolina production facility of Hatteras Yachts with an exclusive sneak peek look at the brand new Hatteras 68 convertible. Like all Hatteras yachts, the 68C starts here at the company's 96-acre production facility with its 660,000 square feet of construction space. Here, I met up with Mark Phillips, Senior Production Supervisor of the 68 Convertible Line. Hi, I'm Mark Phillips, Senior Production Supervisor on the 68 Convertible here at Hatteras. Uh, we're basically set up in an assembly line process with six major stations. Station one being lamination, two mechanical and electrical, three we start to get into the furniture end of it and as it moves on up through four, five and six we get into the completion of the vessel before it goes into paint. This is the bow section of the 68 convertible in its early phases, furniture installation, painting back looking into the engine room at one of the new CAT C32, unique to the 68 here at Hatter. Here we're seeing installations of a composite type new floor, uh, unique to the 68 convertible, replacing old heavy plywood. Right here is the uh, aft side of the steps that lead from the salon down to the engine room. But once again, this is the center point for construction on the boat. The master stateroom is aft of the steps, with the engine room just after that. Here we are in station two. As you can see, the three main forward fuel tanks on the 68 are installed, covered with fire retardant paint. As workers prepare the, all the systems under the deck at this point in time, these station two workers are installing the fiberglass deck supports for the main decks. No longer do we use wood, everything's a composite material. Looking aft, you see the engine room in its early stages. Moving from station two into the flybridge super area, we see a flybridge for a 68. You notice the molded in console as well as the full wraparound forward seating. This part's being prepared for installation in the near future. We move over to the superstructure. You can see an integral part, super, along with the house, rough end for air conditioning, and then process. This unit here is part of a new program. We're starting to module construction from the mechanical side, where the assembly, such as this air conditioning rack, is built off of the boat and installed in a full assembly. As you can see, the quality is impeccable. As you can see by the signatures on this pennant, each owner becomes part of a unique family here at Hatteras. This pendant is presented to the owner at delivery. They even let me sign them. My next stop is a visit with Bruce Angel, Hatteras' Vice President of Production Development. The whole bottom can have a profound effect with the overall performance of a boat. And over the years, we've been closely associated with Jack Hargrave with the hull designs that he was famous for. A lot of those hull designs typically would have a very fine entry Sometimes we'd even say a concave bow section. That would be pretty much the sections of the bow having a little bit of a pocket. As we started pushing the envelope, if you will, with larger engines and better propulsion systems, we started pushing some of these boats that Jack Hargrave intended to not go any faster than 25 knots. We started pushing them to 35. So we started studying alternate designs here about uh, five years ago. And one of those designs we started um, uh, looking at was a convex bow shape. So instead of the concave that I just spoke to, we started putting more of a rounded section into the bow. We have a fairly unique spray rail and uh, chine design on these new boats, such as the 68. Uh, I sometimes tell people when we're talking about the whole design that we now uh, are catering to, that the fastest thing in the world is a four bait sheet of plywood. <laughs> so you have to take that concept and go to a, more of a compromise. And that compromise that we've adopted here has been the convex bow sections, that area that will always impact the wave first. We then go to what's called a warped or twisted hull bottom, where we will go from, let's say, 22 degrees at midship to 2 degrees, sometimes even 0 degrees at the transom. And by doing this, we're able to provide those flatter sections while at speed, you have the flatter sections to minimize the resistance and try to give as much speed that you possibly can. 
A lot of times when I talk to customers about our twisted or warped hull bottom, uh, it has a little bit of a negative connotation associated with it. It really only means that it talks about the dead rise transition over the overall length of the boat. You have roughly 40 degrees of dead rise here, back to only two degrees of dead rise back in the after sections. This is where the dynamic planing area is exposed and where we get most of our speed in spite of the weight that we typically are known for and associated with our durability also. But uh, we've been talking about models and drawings. Why don't we go out in the yard and take a look at the real thing? Well, as you see, Ken, here we are with the real thing. Uh, it all starts here from a performance standpoint. You got a solid hull bottom with only core that starts at the upper chine. Now if we go aft, we can get a little bit better look. It's a little difficult looking at this because of the straps, but you can see the transition of the tunnel. It's a very subtle transition coming off of the buttocks, which the flow is going longitudinal down the boat, trying to make that as subtle as possible to feed this enormous propeller here. Well, this is great for us. It really helped getting out here to see the actual hull that we spoke about in the conference room. I want to thank you for your time. It was very, very informative. Welcome very much. Uh, thank you. We're very proud of it. Great. I'm on my way to see Captain Perry Stansel. Uh, what are they firing up? What engines are you running in this boat? That's the uh, C32 Assert Caterpillar. They're 1,800 horsepower. And uh, this is the first set, like I was telling you earlier. And it's, it's, very, it's a nice motor for the boat because it's a V12 configuration. And so it's a lot of horsepower in a small package. And so it fits the boat very well so that we can accommodate all the new arrangements that we're looking for with the full, full beam masters and makes for a nice arrangement, nice package. Great, all right, well sounds real great. Why don't we get aboard and take a look? All right. Let's go. And now for the really fun stuff. With a pair of Caterpillar 1,800 horsepower C32 diesels below her decks, about half of her 2,100 gallon fuel capacity in her tanks, and 11 people scattered throughout the boat, my test 68C reached an average top speed of 40.7 miles per hour, or 35.4 knots at 2350 RPM. When we dropped her down to 2250 RPM, our average speed was 38.7 miles per hour, or 33.7 knots. At that turn of speed, and according to data from the CAT electronic monitoring system, she had a 169 gallon per hour burn and a range of 433 statute or 376 nautical miles. And at 2000 RPM, my 68C test boat posted a 34.3 mile per hour or 29.8 knot average speed, a 128 gallon per hour fuel burn, and a 506 statute or 440 nautical mile range. She felt rock solid underway and always tracked straight and true. And with our new air handling system, the 68's profile is as sleek and well proportioned as they come. Well, I hope you enjoyed this exclusive sneak peek look at the new Hatteras 68 convertible. And as soon as she's completed and ready for her final sea trials, I'm going to be there. I'm Ken Chrysler, Senior Editor of Power & Motor Yacht Magazine. We'll see you next time on PMY-TV.